um, what we have accomplished before, we went over Surat Al Nas, Surat Al Falaq, Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. We talk about Surat um, Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab bin Watab. We talk about Surat Al Nasr. And we are going to, inshallah, start with Surat Al Kafirun. Now, because some of the audience are requested, let's do like a recap. So I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to go over the summary of those previous lessons. So we're not going to go so much into details because some of them it took us like three, four weeks to finish. Okay, just to finish one surah. So we're not going to redo all this. What I'm going to do, salam, I'm going to recap. So the main ideas in a surah, um, the um, main meaning of every verse of that surah, and so on. But before we get into that, in tafsir, um, you have to pay attention to something very important because you're, uh, maybe you're familiar with the translation of the Qur'an than the Qur'an itself, isn't it? And this is sometimes a barrier, but it's not a big deal. What I suggest for you, when there is an ayah that might be critical to you, or it is an interest, okay, for your homework, task, uh, knowledge, do not please depend on one translation. I'm going to show you some examples, you know, down the road. One translation, what does it mean? What's a translation overall? It's like, I want to, I, I said this before. If you want to translate uh, in, into Arabic, give me five. What does it mean? Give me five? Yeah. One, two, five what, you say? It has its own setting. It has its own, you know, culture, isn't it? Imagine now you're reading a language, it's like at about 1,400 years ago. So you cannot just read what the translator said. It could be wrong. And one of the ideas, for example, when a Sunni scholar is translating Quran and a Shia scholar is translating Quran, everyone comes from his background. Isn't it? So, group of Sunnah, for instance, they say, group of Sunnah, scholars, or school of thought, they say, God is sitting on a throne. Literally, they say it. Like, especially Wahhabi people, or Salafi. You tell them, Ya Habibi, it's impossible. God is not a body. Because the Quran itself says, what? Laysa kemithlihi shay. Nothing looks like God, if you're telling me he is sitting, that means he's doing a movement that a human does, regardless how it is. But you said sitting. So what they are going to say, no, he sits in different way than we do. Ya Habibi used the word sitting. That's it. You created a problem. Mujarrad ma'alit sitting, yani there is motion, isn't it? There is action. That's impossible. God is not like his creatures. Something we do not comprehend. So the Shia will come, they say, no, the ayah, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi istawa, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi istawa. Or when we read in Ayat al-Kursi, la, uh, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-Hayyu al-Qayyum, la ta'akhuduhu sinatun wa la nawla hu ma fi al-Samawati wa ma fi al-Ard, mishak, wasi'a, kursiyuhu, kursiyuhu al-Samawat wa al-Ard, kursiyuhu, a chair in Arabic. But is it literal meaning or metaphoric? Allah, uh, we, you know, Shia people, they say, hey, you have to distinguish between literal, literal direct meaning and what? Metaphoric one. Metaphor, metaphoric one is like what? Uh, we go to a school, you say he is the chairman. If you are chairman, and he has a chair, <laughs> I don't have a chair. Everyone in the class has a chair. You know, you know some people, they will be used. Studying while standing on it. Makilwad and the chair. But what does it mean nowadays? It represents what? Opposition. Isn't it? 
Uh, so we say this is metaphoric. The proof, not because we like it this way, because the Quran first, it says in Quran, nothing looks like him. This is very important. You cannot say God has a son. You cannot say God has parents. You can't. You cannot say God is sitting on his throne. You can't. It's impossible. As a translation, because he's, he belongs to that school of thought, what you are going to read? He sits on. Now, for Shia, what you are going to say? No, it's impossible. This is his authority. Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa. After creating this universe, he was not out of control. He is still in charge, still in control. He's telling you, I'm still in authority. God is not a gambler. Yani, wallah, we put couple materials together, couple matters. Uh oh, now we have a particle. I mean, forces, because you know, the first Big Bang they say from forces, isn't it? Put forces together. We had a part energy. Okay, from that energy, we have a particle. That particle created what? The universe. Whoa, interesting. I did not know about this. Habibi, this is not God anymore. Allah knows everything and in charge of, of everything before that Big Bang you're talking about or what after. So this is why he wants to emphasize on his authority, his throne, that means his in control. So this is one of the problems we're going to see during tafsir and you will be shocked. You're going to find lots of issues in that. Second thing we have to pay attention during tafsir. Sorry for this introduction, but it's very important. We have to pay attention to the ayah, whether it, the surah, whether it's Madani or Makki. What's Madani, what's Makki? I'm going to go over this quickly. We have several opinions about it. Allah Hadi will study it, inshallah, on Monday. But why do I need it? Because we have a group of Muslims they believe if the ayah is madani, okay, which we're going to discuss in a bit, can overwrite the previous ayah, which is what? Mecca. What do I mean by that? Yeah, you have constitution. The constitution, let's say, 100 years ago, okay, cannot contradict a new amendment that I have now. Who's, what's, which one is going to take over? The new amendment, isn't it? So we have Madani and Mecca. Some say Mecca in, 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 in a very fast way, okay? Mecca is the ayah that was delivered in Mecca. We call it Mecca. Like Lubnan, Lubnani, Shaykh. Iraq, Iraqi. So Mecca means what was delivered in Mecca. Surah Mecca. Mecca, yani shu, was delivered in? Mecca was delivered to the Prophet in Mecca. Madani, they say, is what was delivered in Medina. So now which one has a priority? Which one can override, they say, Madani or Mecca? The Prophet used to be in Mecca. Then he went to Medina. He stayed in Mecca 10 years. You know that. At least 10 years as a messenger. And then he went to Medina. We have Quran was delivered by the Prophet in Mecca, and we have Quran delivered was when he was in Medina. Some scholars, they say, no, this is not the idea. Mecca, we know whether it's Mecca or not because of the way it is what? phrased. Usually, Mecca, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Allahu samad very short, very short. Very concise surah, small surahs, small ayat, isn't it? Mm. Simple. And when we used to be kids, we used to memorize what? Short surahs. But in Madani, they say, this is second opinion, they say what? Oh, it was, it is about what? Big surahs, more details. Ayah is bigger. You know, in Surah Al Baqarah, you have one verse, one page. One verse, one page, one of the verses, one page. While uh, in Mecca, Islam wants to well, make you memorize that Quran. Another thing they say, 
Usually in Mecca, I don't talk about details. I say there is Salah, there is Sadaqah, believe in Akhirah, you know, believe in this and that. But we don't have details. In Medina, I have more what, details about rulings. This is second opinion. So he does not care about location. Third opinion, they say, does not, it has to do with Mecca before the immigration of the Prophet to Medina. Yani let's say the Prophet went to Medina, stayed in Medina now, he built his mosque. Then he came back to Mecca. If the ayah delivered there, do I call it Mecca? They say no. It has to be before his migration. Is that clear? What's the advantage of this? So many advantages. One of them, as I said, and I emphasize on this, if I have two rulings, they might look, they might look, there is a contradiction. They say in Medina takes over what? The one was delivered in Mecca or Mecca. Depends on the explanation as I talked about. Questions so far? Okay. So this will lead us to important things. Two important things. Two important things. Inshallah, we're going to start tafsir in a second. Huh? So those are very important to understand how to make tafsir for Quran. And we are going to talk about these in details on Monday. Monday is more like the sciences, you know, of Quran. Here we talk tafsir, but this is introduction because we have a new people. They were not on Monday. Um, the advantage of knowing Mecca and Mecca, Madaniya, Surah, or Ayah, sometimes the Ayah is Mecca, but the Surah, most of it is Madaniya. Why? Because the Quran was not always delivered Per surah, yani, Jibreel does not give the whole surah always. Some of it, it's verses and was put together as one surah by the order of Jibreel. Hala, now different story. We come now to the advantage of Makkiyya or Madaniya. Shul advantage. We said we know which one is the latest and the greatest update as far as what? Rulings. So what do you mean? They say... And this is opinion very famous among Muslim. They say in Quran, we have Nasikh wa Mansukh. I don't want to get into details. Shu yani Nasikh wa Mansukh? Yani fi anna a ruling, fi anna bitura ala al ayah, it says this. We have another ayah as they claim. What does it do in different surah? What does it do? Overrides that. For Sayyid al Khu'i, he says, no. Except few ayat, few, very few ayat. Quran should not have, as you are thinking, Nasuhu Mansur. Okay, because it, it confuses people when they are reading it. Now imagine I'm reading one page. I thought this is the hukum. I go apply it. <gasps> no, and it's in different page, different idea. Uh oh, I did not know. So no, it should not be this. Should not. So, but nisalun yani the whole the few people, other scholars. So, what do, does it mean by nasikh and mansukh? They say we have a general rule, and we have exceptions. We do not have a rule overriding another rule. No, we have a rule, exceptions. And in, in real life, we have a general rule, exception. General, yani everything it's okay to drink or eat, except blah 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 blah. Done. Water, is it? I'm back in Fuqa, okay? Is uh, water uh, halal to drink? What I'm going to tell you. Is it okay to make wudu in water? Yes, you have to make wudu in water. You tell me, Sheikh, but I'm sick. Ah, I override this. Not because it's totally new ruling. It's an exception. If water is going to hurt you, then you go with Sayyam. Is that clear? Hey, the details, we'll talk about it later on. But how it's going to help us? Later on, it's going to help us. The last thing about Madaniya and Makkiyya, uh, and why sometimes we care, will lead us to a very important topic you guys, maybe you pay attention to. I'm sorry if I used you guys, with my full respect. Yeah. Um, we are one family. Um, we have something we call Asbab al-Nuzul. This is very important in our tafsir. I'm not going to talk more details, okay? Asbab al-Nuzul, what does it mean? Anybody knows? Yalla, huh? So you don't feel uh, 
board. What's asbab al nuzul? Asbab, what does asbab mean? Yani from sabab. Shu yani sabab in English. Reason, very good. Shu yani asbab al nuzul? Shu huwa yani al nuzul? Nuzul al Quran. Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al qadr. Shak? Inna shu anzalnahu fi. I want to hear you. Laylat al qadr. Good. فبقولوا نحنا if we want to understand the surah or the ayah it is very important to know what the reason was delivered يعني if there is a story an incident in history can help understand what can help, under, help us understand what the ayah example let's talk about examples we have قل هو الله أحد why it was delivered You have to understand the Prophet was with people about, and I'm talking about as a messenger, delivered to him the Quran about the 23 years. Okay? So what's the occasion the Prophet will tell them there's a surah, go read it. It will be, if it is always this way, it will be like, you know, you keep downloading stuff. You, you need action. You need to, you, we as people, we memorize things and we connect to what? Events. If you want to remember a date or something, you correlate that to event, to something has action in your life, isn't it? What is better than Sahaba among the Prophet? They do something wrong and then what? Based on that event, what will happen? An ayah to correct the situation or guide them. Or tell them about the future. Example, in Surah Al-Qasas, Ghulibat al-Rum. Rum, a big empire. They were defeated. The Islam said, okay, those are defeated now. But I'm going to tell you that those will soon, within a few years, they are going to win. And it happened. So now you are connected to Quran. How we connect to the Quran? Some, some of us. Khira. You connect to the Quran. Or you know, you feel you don't you don't feel comfortable. What do you do? What do you do? Oh, read Quran, you feel comfortable. Some people hatta the Quran you know beneath his or her pillow, shak. Khalas we see a connection. another ayah. Why Qul Audu bi Rabbin Nas wa Qul Audu bi Rabbil Falak were delivered? Why? Big, big, huge argument. We discussed that in a previous session. Inshallah, I promise you, we're going to go over this because those are very interesting. يعني هلا مثلا نحن عنا كل أعوذ برب الفلق مش هيك من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقف ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد. هلا إذا واحد بيجي بيسألنا do we have do we have evil eye in Islam? What you're going to say? The first eye you're going to remember. We have Hasad in Islam. Do we have Ayn in Islam? Yani Heki Wahad in the exam doing his PCAD exam. Fajatan, whoop, got sick. Saibit Ayn. Is there Saibit Ayn? Or Yani brand a new car. Oh, before he, you know, in, start enjoying it, smashed. Oh, Saibit Ayn, my neighbor. Uh, I'm not saying my neighbor, okay? Shakil, uh, now the tradition. Is there Saibit Ayn or there isn't? Is this surah related to Sayyid Ayn or not? That's why the way we're going to start discussing tafsir. We're going to make tafsir um, reflects and projects what our daily life. مش هيك theories. هلا شوية in the beginning was little bit theories. يعني هلا منقول ليش هول two surahs were delivered? Because in Sunni resources, not Shia resources. We don't have this in Shia resources as authentic hadith. But in Sunni resources, they have authentic hadith that they say, billah, they claim the Prophet was what? They claim he was what? Not just that. Was? No. Was hurt by black magic. Imagine the Prophet that he is protected by Jibreel to deliver the proper message, who is Al-Ma'asum, 
they claim he came to a point what, under the effect of what? Interesting. So Halla Biji, two people are married. Start the problem. Ya Habibi Manti, when you're married, after a while, routine is a killer. We have responsibilities, she has responsibilities, she is working 40 hours, he is working 60 hours. Now for sure you are going to come into a clashes, yani, sure, big deal. Yani. La Sheikh, there is a black magic. I saw hijab in my basement and it has weird words. Is there something like this or no? I'm not here to say there is or not, we'll talk about it later on. But isn't what's happening now? Imagine those people, they narrated that according to their claim, it affected whom? The Prophet. He did not know. He, start, he stayed home. Ya Habibi, he the Prophet. Is that the Prophet? al masum He does not know what's happening in certain situations. How am I going to follow him anymore? So what's their proof? Oh, we have hadith. And because of the hadith, those surah were delivered. Two surahs were delivered. So here we come with our tools. Did it happen really? What's the proof? So now we see the reason why the surah was delivered affecting our understanding of what? The surah. And that's why some people, they claim hasad. When nafathat fil uqad has to do with what? Nafathat fil uqad, quickly. What does it mean? And why do you not? Okay? And this is a very complicated issue. Magic, it's like wrapping it up and tying it in a very difficult way. No one wa can unwrap it. Yeah, Habibi, what are you talking about? Is that true or right? Uh, I mean, true or wrong? The advantage to understand history. Clear? This is, we call it what? Asbab al nuzul Asbab al nuzul it has a smaller problem, but major one. We cannot always approve it. Most of the reasons claimed this ayah or that surah was delivered, weak hadith. And when it comes to Quran, you are not allowed to let a weak hadith control what? Quran. Quran is stronger than weak hadith. Always Ahlul Bayt, they say the source, the main reference, the baseline is the Quran, not the hadith. You bring the hadith, compare it to Quran. If the, the hadith contradicts with the Quran, what do I do with it? I stop taking it. Now we are doing the opposite. But can the hadith limit my understanding as an Arabic guy if it is weak hadith? Also, this is a problematic. Unless we have other tools, which inshallah we'll discuss on Mondays. By the end. Tafsir, really. So now we're going to start with the surat, uh, I don't know how much time we have left. We're going to start with surat al-kafirun, but before we start that, would you, um, would you mind if we go over the previous sessions, or no, we start from surat al-kafirun, I'm asking you. What do you think? So let, let me do a, you know, a quick quiz, okay? Uh, Pop-up quiz. So, we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. What does it mean? What does ahad mean? Okay, before then. We said, Qul huwa. Qul huwa. What's Qul in Arabic? In English would be? Huh? Say. Why the Quran is telling the Prophet Qul? Who is going to tell us, Mishak? Isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet, Oh, Muhammad, say. He's going to say it. Why is he ordering the Prophet to say? He put it in the Quran. Qul. يعني قل in English. Say there is one God. Why we have this? Why? Why dhigri ma mabalish? Allahu ahad. Yani Allah is one, the only one. Why we have to put say? Not we, I mean, it's in the Quran. Anybody? Let's pop up quiz. Why and what, what's the meaning? Allahu Samad. What's a Samad? Yalla. What's a Samad? Anyone pray here? Do we pray? 
Okay, we always say Qul Allahu Ahad. That's very nice. So uh, why we say as samad What does it mean? No. as samad is like a sabr, a sabur, patient. samad what does it mean? يعني طب قبل ما ننزل على الصورة خلينا نطلع شوي ل in the beginning we say بسم الله الرحمن what الرحيم شاك ليش we say بسم الله we don't say بسم الإله إله means God why we say الله بسم الله يعني بسم الله عشان في قبلك اص what's what's the difference between الرحمن والرحيم متنينته mercy هنا طب ليش واحد اسمه الرحمن لغة والثاني عنا الرحيم why anybody knows that's very good they say الرحمن by the way the only being called الرحمن is Allah we do not call any being الرحمن we have عبد الرحمن we don't have الرحمن Okay, Abd al-Rahman means the servant of al-Rahman, or Abd al-Nabi means this. Not, it does not mean worshiping the Nabi. Abd al-Nabi means the servant of al-Nabi. Al-Rahman, al-Rahim. They say al-Rahman. It is for Allah merciful for every human being, every being, everything is merciful. But there is a special mercy for special people. He used here what al-Rahim. يعني as a mu'min you should get what? An exclusive offer. هيدا an exclusive offer, what do we call it? الرحيمية, يعني الرحيم. يوم القيامة, Allah is not just Rahman for you as a mu'min, He is الرحيم. Okay? So this surah has so many meanings. يعني هلا, لم, لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد, مش هيك؟ شو يعني كفوا؟ هول تفسير the whole idea brothers and sisters is not my job to make you feel things are complicated no we are here you and me to learn from each other because I learn from you you'll be shocked how much I learn from you so when we read Quran we enjoy it يعني هلا big difference between واحد عم يقرأ قل هو الله واحد ما فهم منا شيء أبدا واحد واو this is nice oh this is the meaning of it so we are here to understand to understand the Quran and also to dig into it a little bit little bit deeper I promise you unless you want to go more into it we can yani mashallah it will take longer but it is very important See, you know, sometimes in, in our jobs, we memorize a new terminology just to fit our what? resume or our experience. Allah, who, who's taken now uh, uh, math courses? Anyone? Allah, with math courses, we have a sign or cosine. Why do you want to memorize them? I mean, as, as terminologies. It fits the degree. Oh, to get a degree. Now I'm not talking about yet biology, or physiology, or psychology. Why do you study all this? So you can get a degree and find a job. You love Allah. And Allah send you a message. A message. He sent the best people on earth. His name, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to deliver it to you. And he's telling you, in it, we have guidance. And I love you. That's why I send you that letter. Ya yeah, God, I'm busy. Why? Read this. I read it. But what's Ahad? I do not know. Have you? It's my word. No, 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 no. I'm busy now. But when it comes to job, you memorize so many words. This is the advantage of tafsir. Tafsir should be a way to get you closer to God, not just through emotions, also through what? Knowledge. It's very important. 
يعني it is not right after 50 years I do not know a meaning of a word that I'm repeating every day يعني كيف أنا بحب الله how do I love him and I don't care about his message there is something encrypted maybe this is the way I look at it is there a problem in my statement you agree with me okay so what I'm gonna do since the pop pop-up quiz did not work that properly okay yeah next time we'll bring popcorn um, the this pop quiz did not work properly uh, so what I'm gonna do I promise you uh, we'll go over Surah Al Surat Al-Nas, Surat Al-Falaq in a very simple way, nice way get the meaning of it not just the meaning of the words the meaning of the ayah because you will be shocked how beautiful okay, the structure there is a structure behind it eloquence of the Quran is not just because uh, it is good Arabic language no, there is a structure there is a hidden structure it makes you look into it in a deeper and deeper and deeper ways. And it's very interesting. And sometimes the Quran on purpose uses certain words that has so many meanings. And I'll give you an example uh, quickly. So when we are reading قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد In Arabic I can say قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَاحَد What's the difference between واحد and أحد? There should be a reason. That's what the people know. But in reality, it is not. You're the real Bisha. But there is a reason. Thank you for that. We use it a lot. If you are not in Arabic, 100% uh, good in Arabic. What's the, what's the day today? Oh, what's the relation? It's not a day, okay? We call this day Ahad. Why? Because Ahad is like واحد isn't it? اثنين ثلاثة ثري حتى ثري بالإنجليزي يعني ثلاثة ثري أربعة and and أربعة خميس خمسة الجمعة is a special day so those we are gonna go over them إن شاء الله قل عوض برب الناس قل عوض برب الفلق قل هو الله أحد سورة النصر سورة uh, we are going to cover them quickly in a smooth way and very productive way. Then after that, we'll start with قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ But I'll give you now, I don't know how many, we still have like three minutes. I'll give you now a quick way to look at the Qur'an. Do not read the Qur'an as a Google translator. Tell me, Sheikh, I don't have time. No problem. I am with you. I don't have time too. But at least, yeah, Habibi. Habibi is a good word, okay? At least one, one ayah per day. Is there something wrong? One ayah per day? Instagram and applications. And TikTok and blah, blah, blah. One ayah, say, small ayah. Something you memorize. Say, I would like to know what does it mean. And I would love to. This will strengthen your Iman. Because there is behind it lots of knowledge. Example. We start in every surah in the Quran, except Surah at tawbah in a very simple verse. We say, Bismillahir Rahmanir. Rahim. We have different opinion. Is that verse by itself or belong to the first ayah? Or is it from the Quran or not? We have Muslims, they have different opinions. As Shia, we believe Bismillah Rahman Rahim is portion of every ayah and uh, every surah in the Quran except Surah at tawbah Did not start with that. Because Surah at tawbah starts with a punishment statement. It's wrong to start, Allah is the merciful. It does not work. But 113 out of 114, they start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And I always say this, Allah is powerful, isn't it? Allah is just. Allah, He can do so many things. Allah is 
omnip he did not use any of the, these attributes. He emphasized on a very nice message for us because he loves us. What did he say? Bismillah, what? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Yani Allah is calling us from the beginning, what? If you are a sinner, if you have a problems, come to me. Imagine, 113 surah, yani 99% of the Quran, start with mercy. Never he used other attributes. Never said Bismillah, the most powerful. No. No. Why? It's a good message for us. It's very interesting. That's why when we say Islam is the religion of peace, it is. So now I want from you, as a quick you know, homework, to uh, go over this ayah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What does it mean? Why it's so powerful? When we should use it? Why it is almost in every surah except one? Why? Is it ayah from the Quran of every surah or not? Just name it. You have too many things about this. Quickly, I'll, it's just to recap here, and here we, we conclude, we keep the rest for questions and answers. The sister, I don't know which one said Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, you said? Okay. Your name? Diana? Okay. Uh, I'm very bad in names, okay? So I might ask this question again. Uh, she said something very important. There is a difference, as they say, between Ar-Rahman, what? And Ar-Rahim. In English, here we start seeing the limitations. Allah, انت واحد generous بالانجليش خلاص generous بالعربي generous عنده so many meanings lion has so many meanings okay so in Arabic it's much deeper because it's an, a real language it's a real la language it's a very old language Arabic Hebrew those are one of the one of the oldest languages on earth okay so when I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, what does Allah mean? Can I say God rather than Allah? When I say Allah, is that a problem? People get offended or not? When I say ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, why should I distinguish between ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim? What's the importance of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? And just name it as I said, this is your homework. But think quickly, my advice in your life, anything you start with, anything, exam, eating, drinking, halal drink, I'm saying. Okay. Before he starts his beer, Bismillah, does not work, Habib. It's not going to make it halal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But he wants to backbite someone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala nabi. Let me remember the story. Ya Habibi. It does not work. You cannot have double standards. Uh, always start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You want to start your car. Say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Do not only refer to God when you are afraid. That's what we are going to explain right now. Yani shu amun ul nahna Bismillah. What does it mean? I mean, I'm starting this in the name of Allah. Allah did not say Bismi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Allah on purpose said Allah, then Ar-Rahman, then Ar-Rahim. Why Allah? That's what we are going to explain later on. Yani Allah could have said what? Bismi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, isn't it? Why there is Allah? Oh, there is something important behind that. Okay? There is something important. In Arabic, you have Allah, you have Ilah. Why we choose Allah, not Ilah? Example, to make it simple, later on you look into it and we discuss it. A person wants to convert to Islam. Can he say, La ilaha illa al-ilah? Ashhadu an la ilaha illa al-ilah. Ilah means what? Ilah means what? God. He has to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ilah could be any God. Yani, middle English, capital, uppercase, 
okay? Capital letter or smaller letter. Big difference, isn't it? What's the difference? When I put God, capital letter, what does it mean? The real God. Small letter, could be any God. صح? So, Bismillah, يعني you are specifying that God. There is something behind that word. Always use that. So when you are starting, you get hasanat. يعني you indirectly you are setting your intention. Bismillah, يعني this is under the control of God in His name. يعني I'm following His rules. يعني I'm not gonna do something haram. Oh, that's an extra impunity for you. That's a shield. Anything you started, you started with Bismillah. Why? You feel Allah is with you and you are telling yourself, I have to do it for the sake of Allah. Okay? It's like you watch in old movies. In the name of the king, what does it mean? Who is the legislator? In the name of the king and he's Start talking, putting rules. Who's the legislator here? Who puts the laws? You or the king? Oh, so what do you do if it's in the name of the king? That means who is responsible? The, you are going to report to? So, مش راح تعمل حرام وانت عم تقول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. هلا واحد بيجي بيقول لي شيخ يا عشان انا عم بعمل حرام ام نجنا السيد. يا حبيبي نو دو ذا اوبوزيت سيد and say, because I said it, I don't want to do haram. <laughs> it's the opposite. Mish wahad عشان no wallah amal vaping haram, yani marijuana vaping, lil asaf, yani it is haram. Sheikh, because I did this, I'm not gonna pray. Ya Habibi, you have to pray. Yeah, but they told me I might not get hasanat. Ya Habibi, yes, you did something wrong. But does not mean you ruin the relation between you and God. Get back and talk to Allah and do your wajib. Allah, it's up to Allah what He's going to give you and how He's going to punish you or how He's going to forgive you. Don't give up though. Yani, you don't have to be 100% good or 100% bad. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim is telling you, come back to Allah because I'm merciful. Why am I merciful? Because you do something wrong. Because you feel you are under pressure. So we stop it here. The rest will keep it for questions and answers. Any questions and answers, please let me know. Yes. Do we?